Hi guys, uh, welcome to uh, today's webinar. My name is Joshua Matumo, the founder and MD for Street Consultants. I hope you are having a nice week and um, the afternoon has been kind to you. Welcome to today's webinar. The topic of today's webinar is uh, the power of trading breakouts and how to correctly trade breakouts. Uh, I'll be the one coordinating the webinar and um, we're going to cover quite an array of topics uh, under the topic of the webinar, including why a webinar is significant in our trading, uh, why should we pay attention to webinars, why are we even having this webinar in the first place. And from time to time, I'll be going off the topic to uh, explain some concepts that will help you uh, get a nice a hold of the concept that is the trading breakout and so i'm really looking forward to a quiet and engaging session with you i hope you're powered and ready for this um i would like to introduce my partner um a fellow consultant from Street consultants that is george mogo um i'll just request him to say hi to the audience Hi guys. Yeah, this is this is George. Um, welcome everybody to our webinar. It's gonna be a very interesting session, and I hope you guys are prepared for this, because this is this one of one of the most profitable um, trading strategy we actually apply in the in the forex market. So I'll, I'll forward again to Joshua to, to start at our class. Okay, okay. George makes me feel like I'm a news broadcaster, but it's all good. It's all good. So I hope you guys are ready. I think uh, without wasting further time, we're going to just get right into it. The way that I have, we have scheduled today's webinar is that we have a presentation. I'm just going to put it, put it up on the screen that uh, we've prepared to cover the various topics, I mean the subtopics and uh, areas that we believe are of the most significance as to your understanding of how to trade breakouts and the power of trading breakouts in Forex, uh, in, forex in Forex markets. Some of the things that we're going to be covering is um, how do we tell which is the right breakout to trade? How do we tell between a real breakout and a fake breakout? what is the confirmation that triggers our entry into the trade after the breakout has formed. That and among more, we're going to be uh, covering that. And as well, I want this to be really engaging as far as I'll be using live markets using the EGM platform to show you live examples of how we come about trading breakouts, spotting breakouts, and how to correctly open positions set parameters of stop loss and take profit while adhering to the uh, principle of risk to reward ratio and all these uh, we're going to be polished on all these within this hour and therefore i think i'll just move straight into it the first the first topic i'm going to cover is the power of trading breakouts and just we're going to be looking at the definition of breakouts so um, we're going to be looking at the definition of breakout in a second, just making sure that everything is up and running. And therefore, that's the definition of breakout. Breakouts occurs in the forex markets when price gets out or breaks out from a consolidation or a, trending, a trading range or when a certain market level has been broken, such as a support or resistance or even pivot levels. Breakouts signify a new sentiment or a change in supply uh, and demand among buyers and sellers. Yeah, all traders understand that the markets are set on the basis of uh, economics of supply and demand. So when a buyer's uh, demand for a currency pair outweighs uh, the sellers, then 
it leads the market to move upwards or just get bullish and the vice versa is true. And therefore, when uh, a process of supply and demand change, that's when after a period of consolidation, that's when we experience breakouts. Then the next thing we're going to cover is that, uh, just before I move forward, you can feel free to forward your questions. And at one point between the webinar, we're going to be addressing some of your questions as we cover the various topics. And therefore, will be key to make it as engaging as possible. And therefore, moving forward, uh, we're going to cover the next subtopic, which is why, why breakouts? Why do we trade breakouts? Why are breakouts important to us, price action traders? Uh, in the forex markets this is the first point is that understanding where why and how breakouts occur in forex trading is quite a significant aspect of successful and profitable price action trading in forex what if i told you today that we have traders in the forex markets who trade uh, forex market and live out of their career just by mastering how to trade uh, forex breakouts this is real. It's such a powerful trading strategy that if well mastered and practice of it over time, it can be it can prove to be really profitable. And moving forward, I'll tell you why this is so. The next point as to why um, we trade breakouts and what is significant in trading breakouts is the understanding and differentiating between uh, which is a real breakout and which is a fake out. That is even more important. That is after you're able to recognize how to identify breakouts in the forex charts. And in a few minutes, I'll be taking you back to the charts where we're going to find out how we locate some of the breakouts, how we go about trading them on live markets, and uh, it's going to get more engaging. That point I'll cover on why we trade breakouts is what makes breakout, uh, breakouts powerful strategies in trading is due to the fact that they occur after a consolidation that is after the markets have built a certain momentum and they're kind of of a regular uh, movement kind of pattern, thereby creating an imminent imbalance on the prices among buyers and sellers. You remember my point about demand and supply, buyers and sellers, buyers are toying sellers or sellers are toying buyers and pushing the market. This is the same point. And therefore, I, I would put this like in two people who are fighting, uh, who have been fighting for long, uh, the fight being consolidation and they're looking forward to break and access freedom and this is the only way out is by overpowering one another and therefore the moment one conquers the other then they're out in the space to enjoy the freedom and this is why breakers are such a powerful tool in trading the forex market and therefore the one who overpowers the other in this case being a war between buyers and sellers bulls and the bears then takes over the market and often Openly, when breakouts happen, it's actually decided by very long moves in the forex market. And this is one of the reasons why uh, we're careful to analyze them and to use them to our advantage when we open new trades in the forex markets. Uh, moving forward, uh, the other point that uh, makes breakouts really significant in trading forex is the fact that they offer us uh, a significant risk to reward ratio thereby increasing our odds of making profits while keeping our risks exposure low. There's a thing, there's a thing they say in Forex that the first, the first um, goal of a Forex trader is not to lose money. The second goal is not to lose money. And the third goal is not to lose money. Now, why breakouts appear as quite a significant tool is the fact that uh, they enable us to get a proper risk to reward ratio of one to two to one to three. And this is the ultimate goal, or this should be your ultimate goal as a Forex trader. Remember, we always say in price action and in Forex trading, less is more. By this, we mean have uh, less trades and then uh, weigh up on your quality of the trades. If you have a few quality trades in a month or two months, then you're good to go. Unless, unlike other capital markets or businesses in Forex less is more. And therefore, we always aim to get trades that can offer us a significant uh, risk to reward ratio 
and trading breakout is one of the ways that if well mastered can really make you a profitable trader moving forward um we're going to be talking to be covering the various ways in which we identify and trade breakouts one of the avenues that we'll be covering in today's webinars is the channels how do we trade breakouts within channels how do breakouts appear or form within channels how do we go about uh, opening positions based on breakouts forming within a channel then of, of course we're going also to cover triangles and we're going to cover wages the good thing is that if you are a new trader uh, because this is quite an advanced level of uh, uh, the topic we have then we're going to be covering because i'm going to be drawing these channels live with you uh, on the live markets as well as the triangles and wages and I'm, we're going to be showing you how these patterns come about and how do we trade breakouts based on these patterns so it's about to get more exciting as we near to get into the live market in order to uh, spot these patterns and to locate uh, favorable breakouts in the real market as opposed to the uh, PowerPoint presentation that is showing on our screens. And therefore, uh, moving forward, we start off by looking at channels. How do we um, spot breakouts in channel? How do we trade breakouts based on, 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 on Forex channels? It's important to just mention on a light note what are channels. These are channels are formed between parallel support and resistance lines. They indicate a relatively strong uh, trend with the price trading within the lines. A breakout occurring in a channel indicates either a reversal in the trend or a change in the slope of the trend. I have a few um, examples of drawings of chart patterns that indicate well, in Forex, you normally have three types of channels. We have um, a bullish channel, we have a bearish uh, channel, and we as well have an horizontal channel. And therefore, at this point, I would like us to go straight to the, just open our charts and try to spot some channels on uh, some currency pairs. We just get uh, live uh, on the market, just trying to, position my audio as well for you to have a better view um, of the charts and therefore open on our screen is um, an EGM securities account and I want to get you now into the meat of the webinar to identify some of the channels that we previously have located on the forex markets and we're going to be using them as examples of how we trade breakouts. How do we come about identifying a breakout? And we're going to start by uh, looking at an ascending channel that uh, we spot at the currency pair of the Great Britain pound against the Canadian dollar. That pair right there. So I'm just going to delete the arrows and show you how do we come about identifying a price channel before even we head up to identify the breakout. One thing that I should note, or I must uh, let you know in Forex is that whenever you're drawing chart patterns on Forex, you never have to force chart patterns to match up what you want. Instead, we follow the markets. For instance, when you're drawing uh, a price channel, you look at the swings high and the swings low. And of course, even by looking at the naked charts with your eyes, you can outrightly tell that there is a channel that, uh, a bullish channel that is, that forms starting from this point here, where I'm going to draw an horizontal line starting from below here. And it's going all the way um, to this point. That's the first line whereby we've joined the swing lows of uh, the bullish channel. And then of course you pick up an horizontal line and um, spot the swing highs of this channel from down here and then you can take it all the way to the top and that's obviously a clear price channel that we have see how simple that was and therefore we, we, we get to learn that this channel has held ground since 25th August around there up to around 9th of April 2018 that's almost like nine months price channel and therefore 
at this point is where now we get to look for breakout. Remember my definition earlier when I was starting the webinar that breakout uh, happen or uh, when prices breaks out of a consolidation or a ranging market. And what has happened within this channel is that prices have respected uh, the boundaries, that is the support and resistance of this channel, of this uh, bullish channel. And it is at this point, it is at this point, I'm just going to insert a shape right here. It is at this point that um, this channel broke out of its um, a long trend, that is the eight months, and this is where we find uh, a breakout happening. Then the next question would be, um, okay, the markets have pushed the prices or the sellers have pushed the prices from the channel that has held grounds for quite a while. But what really uh, based on uh, such, such a, a, a breakout, just going to change the color thing for you for better visibility. What really informs us as traders to open positions based on such a breakout? Because this is how simple it should be to locate these patterns and even locate breakouts in Forex markets. Anyone who tells you Forex is complicated, then they're misguiding you. It should be clear, it should be elaborate. The thing is, learn how to draw these patterns. Identify the area where uh, the norm is broken. That is, for instance, in our case, we have uh, an eminent price channel that was broken at this point. And therefore, this level is where uh, the breakout happened. But then as price action traders, as professional traders, we don't usually rush to open positions just immediately after the breakout happens. And therefore, what we wait and what we always wait, and something I'm going to cover as we progress with the webinar is that we always have to wait for confirmation candlesticks. For instance, this is a bearish breakout from a bullish channel. And if I were you or uh, any professional trader wouldn't open a position outrightly at the price of 76.80, but rather I would have waited or we should have waited for the next strong bearish candlestick, which is um, right here, this candlestick that I'm indicating here. So this is the candlestick that mm, should have acted as our confirmation uh, signal to open a sell position based on this uh, breakout on the bullish channel. Then the next question we would ask ourselves then, where would be the appropriate place to position our stop loss? We always position our stop loss just a few pips above the breakout candlestick. This strong bearish candlestick that I'm placing the calsa on was our bearish um, breakout candlestick. And therefore, you just uh, do a mathematics of a, a few pips. Usually we take 15 to 20 pips above the breakout candlestick. That's where we position our stop loss. Then of course, we look to achieve a proper risk to reward ratio because at the end of the day, if a trade doesn't offer you a proper risk to reward ratio, then it's not worth taking. Just analyze and look for the next opportunity. The markets are not in a hurry. These opportunities will always show up. This is the patience that we as traders are required to uphold as we approach Forex trading. That is, if successful and consistency in making money in the Forex market is concerned. And therefore, if I were in the market at this point, I would have placed my stop loss up there. Then, of course, I would have targeted a risk to reward ratio of around one to two. And that would have given me uh, this price level of 71.13 as my target take profit. And therefore, this is how one of the ways you trade breakouts. You wait for your confirmation to happen. You don't open trades outrightly after the breakout has happened. I'll move forward to uh, highlight another example of um, breakout based on a price channel. Um, but at this point, I think I'm going to give George just half a minute to add a comment on this example that we have. So, uh, George, kindly, you have a word. You have a yes, yes, yes. Um, um, I would like, like you to concentrate on how the breakout occurred. 
we had a strong bearish candle penetrate the the the, 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 support, line, the support line which is which, which is, is connecting, connecting the single lows and then, and then afterwards, afterwards we have a doji if josh could zoom in a little you can see um uh, an, an indecision candle which is covered extensively on our course of price action trading we see there was an indecision and right after the indecision we had a strong follow-up that is the confirmation there was indecision and then a decision was made it is that simple. It, this is not something that is complicated. You just have to stick to your rules. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you for that. Um, I think to just wrap it up about what George was saying was that there was an indecision after the breakout happened and therefore the market was unsure. Nobody was controlling the markets, the bulls and the bears. There was kind of a battle. And at the end of the day, on the, that day, since this is a daily time frame. Uh, chart pattern is where now the uh, the bears took over the market and pushed the market down and this is what acts as our confirmation to uh, take position that is open our sell position based on such uh, a breakout and therefore uh, moving very fast I'm going to cover uh, just a second example of a descending channel and we have analyzed uh, the market pair of the US dollar Again, is the Japanese yen to give you an example or to just showcase uh, another nice breakout. Now, this time, this is a bearish price channel. And I just deleted my horizontal lines to show you how simple it is to spot such channels. And having spotted the channels, all we do as traders is wait. One of the guys I admire in Forex is Warren Buffett. And one of his, one of his most famous quotes as a speculator or as a trader in the forex and stock markets uh, warren buffett says that 90 percent of the time he is not trading he is waiting he is watching the markets so he trades 10 percent of the time this further acknowledges to my ideal that it's not multiple trades it's just quality trades and therefore i won't indulge too much into that level of wisdom but uh, we are racing again it's time and i'm going to help you draw a descending price channel that is quite eminent and clear to our eyes and this is how you draw a descending price channel yeah, you just join up the the swing highs and the swing lows to come up with a clear price channel and what we experience here is yet again another eminent um breakout that happened towards uh, to the close of uh, this descending price channel like right where I'm indicating uh, using my Eclipse um, shape and let me just zoom in a bit so this is this is our bullish confirmation the candlestick that I'm pointing the cursor at this is our bullish confirmation candlestick you remember when I was talking about why are we even discussing about uh, uh trading breakouts and one of the reasons i gave is that breakouts helps us they are such powerful trading tools in that they enable us to risk less money while we're targeting um high returns because look at this example that we're having on the pair of the us dollar against the japanese yen after the confirmation of the bullish candlestick because if i was trading on the market this would be my entry point after the bullish candlestick has actually confirmed that the sentiment has changed from the price channel and buyers have pushed the prices up and broken out of the channel. And this is a proper uh, example of a breakout. And therefore, I would position my stop loss around in the middle of the channel, just a few pips from the breakout, um, from the breakout candlesticks. This would be my ideal place to position my stop loss at the price of 100.26. And then, of course, I would target a proper risk to reward ratio. I wouldn't be uh, too ambitious about it. This is already a risk to reward ratio of around 1 to 2 or 1 to 2.5. But then you see, uh, I would have banked early profits on this pair if I was taking this trade on the market. And you see what happened afterwards, even after you take profit is hit, the market uh, went on rising. And 
uh, a topic that we probably would cover in another webinar would be how to scale your trades. For instance, when you trade in the profit zone and you clearly see there's high momentum for the markets to trade on your direction, there's a scale we call trailing uh, your stop loss. This is why you move your stop loss up and to the extent whereby your trade is trading at a no risk uh, level. And therefore I would move my stop loss probably up up a bit and then of course uh, extend my TP or my take profit up here of course given on my judgment on how much the bullish momentum was on this pair that's a topic for another day what we never mess with is we don't shift our stop losses but when you're trading in the profit zone you maximize to make the most money out of it and this is a this is a whole different uh, technique and we cover this um, all these strategies and all these techniques in our comprehensive uh, uh, price action course that we offer uh, from at our company. This showing here is just a close look at our website. We have a forex course, a comprehensive online forex course uh, that is quite covers this and even more. And therefore moving forward, so this is quite clear. You see how significant this could have been in terms of offering you a very classic profit uh, I mean, loss to profit ratio, which is the ultimate goal of any trader out there. And this should be your goal as well. Now, um, I, I, I just noticed how much time is rushing and I need to speed up my pace in covering this topic as we have a lot. And so I'm going to further um, move on to the next example, the next topic that we're going to cover on how we trade uh, breakouts. And that is uh, based on triangles. As you see, we have different shapes and types of triangles that are forming on the charts. I mean, on the on our PowerPoint presentation, as you can see. Uh, just a simple de definition. Uh, uh, a triangle pattern is usually formed between converging support and resistance lines. We have two types of triangles, that is ascending triangles and descending triangles. Even more exciting now, let's move on into, onto the, into the, uh, uh, the market itself. Let's, I want us to try to locate uh, an example of breakouts that happen within uh, triangles. What would be the point that I would probably uh, mention regarding breakouts that happen within a triangle is that the, just like we covered on the price channel is that breakouts that happen within a triangle offers us a very classic risk to reward ratio. It actually enables us to risk a very, very little amount of our capital. We expose a bit of our capital while we target higher profits. And this is the essence of uh, consistent uh, profit, uh, I mean, trading and making money in the forex market. So if any trade doesn't offer you a greater reward than the risk you're exposing your capital to the market, then it's not worth taking. And you should revise or probably seek education or just learn the markets and be patient to wait for the best setups. Moving on to the charts, an example of um, a triangle we're going to cover is on the US dollar, uh, Japanese yen, US dollar, Japanese yen. Um, we moved back, we just analyzed the market back as we were looking, try to look to spot a very nice uh, triangle and uh, moving back. You know what they say about history repeats itself. You know what they say about price action. You know what they say about um, certain patterns that have happened before last week, last month, last year, five years ago. They, are, they will happen again. They repeat themselves. And the mastery of these uh, chart patterns is what uh, forms or uh, guides has as price action traders. And therefore our job is to master these patterns as we're doing right now on this webinar master how they happen, how we take advantage of them, how we use them to uh, to make them our edge. And therefore, again, I'm just going to delete uh, there. Now, developing an eye to catch some of these patterns takes a bit of experience, but with a close eye, and if you really understand how these patterns come across, and especially when you're trading higher time frames, because something you realize in all our setups is that we may we 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 concentrate on the higher time frames of the weekly and the daily. A full day of trading, a full week of trading, gives you a stronger sentiment as to the long term uh, direction of the of the of the forex market. And this is why at Fourth Street Consultants, our trading is usually based 
on the higher time frames and we have a strategy that we analyze the market called the top down approach this is also covered on our forex course on our comprehensive online forex course from our website this is where you analyze the markets from the higher time frames of the monthly to get the higher sentiment of where the markets are headed in the higher time frame then you can analyze look for opportunities down to the lower time frames of the daily and the four hour whereby your decisions on which direction you take up your positions needs to be aligned by the higher time frame for instance if the long term time frame uh, is on a monthly then it would make more sense you following the higher time frames when you're opening a position based on the daily or the four hour sorry i always step out of the topic now let's draw this triangle um this is where we spotted um as a symmetrical triangle and i'm just going to draw the edges and join up the curves and uh, that's our asymmetrical triangle right there see how simple it is once you spot the edges and the pattern is eminent on uh, on a on a weekly time frame see there's something i mentioned about trading triangles and um basing our trading decisions on breakouts based on triangles see what happened here is let me just zoom in a bit for you so this is our triangle and this is how you spot and draw a triangle then you see markets uh, were trading while they were consolidating to the edge of the triangle and what happened thereafter because at this point at this level where i'm drawing the horizontal line where the markets were here before the following trading days occurred I'm, I'm assuming this was our current market position at this point would it have known whether it's the bulls or the bears that are going to take control of the markets and therefore uh our job as i said as forex traders especially price action traders is to always wait for market to guide us we follow the price we don't enforce our will or what we think about the markets upon the markets we follow the price see what happened here is uh there was an imminent breakout that happened and it was a bullish breakout there was a first candlestick that hit or that broke out of this triangle and then it was followed by um an indecisive candlestick and then it was followed by another bullish candlestick and if i was trading the forex markets then this candlestick that i'm pointing the arrow at would have acted as my confirmation trigger to enter a buy position based on this breakout based on this triangle and therefore this is um this is this would be my ideal entry price level those traders who have uh, issues or challenges uh, trying to find out which is the correct trigger to enter your trades these are some of the things you look out for you look out for confirmation candlesticks to confirm that the sentiment of the market has actually shifted and therefore this would be my entry price level of course, my stop loss would be a little bit below the previous candlestick in the uh, in the in the triangle. That would be ideally I would ideally place place my stop loss at this price, and of course I would position my TP a bit high to make sure that I target a risk reward ratio of at least one to one point five or at least one to one. I mean one to two. That would be quite an ideal place to position uh, my TP or if you don't want to be ambitious or you you know you should understand yourself how much patience can you hold a trade for as a person in Forex it's very important to understand your personality because your trading strategy and your trading plan should always align to your personality if you understand that you're personally not a really quite a patient person you can't wait for several weeks for your trades to work out then you'd probably target uh, a lower risk to reward ratio which i strongly advise against but it's the point is it's very important to understand uh, your personality as a trader and develop your trading plan alongside a personality a trading plan that fits into your personality and therefore this is how you identify a triangle and uh, of course open positions based on a triangle probably i'll call uh, judge back in the room to um add on add on a few pointers probably one or two then we can move forward oh yes um i would like you to note um the time it took for the trade to work out remember we are we are we are following the the higher time frame this is on a weekly time frame 
and you can see after the breakout the amount of mindset and, and discipline that is required in this art because you can see the amount of ranging that happened before actually the, the, the rally started that's it that's it thank you george thank you george george is usually has a lot of contribution is actually trying to limit his conversation and contribution into this but uh, i think uh, we need to reschedule and just get more time for these webinars to just share our experience and wisdom into new into new traders because this is what we essentially do at fourth street consultants and therefore i'll just move right ahead I realize I can't cover all examples given the time, how fast the time is moving given we have one hour. And so what I'm going to do is jump on, jump next to the next uh, price action patterns from where we look for uh, to spot opportunities based on trading breakouts. And this is the wages, just a simple quick, quick definition of wages that uh, wages are actually quite similar to triangles in that they are formed between converging support and resistance. The difference is that whereas support and resistance in a triangle have one positive and one negative slope, the support and resistance of a wage would both have either a positive or a negative slope. Wages with a positive slope are called rising wages, whereas those with a negative slope are called negative wages. Did you hear some jargon there? That's, 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 I know that can, especially for new traders can get them thinking a lot, but I'm just going to break it down for you as much as I can. So this is essentially the definition of wages. What I'm going to do to even help you understand better is get right into our charts and try to uh, spot an example of a wedge that we, um, already analyzed the markets and spotted on one of the pairs. And this is um, a rising wage on the pair of the Great Britain pound um, against the Japanese yen. That is the Great Britain pound against the Japanese yen. Traders out there refer to this pair as the monster. George, why, why, why do traders refer to this pair as the monster? Yes, um, this pair, on a light note, on a light note. This pair is, is actually a very volatile pair and uh, volatility is not something that you get uh, easily. So the, the pound yen is a, very, is a very volatile pair and moves very fast. That's why it's referred to the monster and, and it moves very huge distances. Uh, within a, a, a blink of an eye. So um, traders have a good history with this, but um, definitely, you know, the 90% usually cry. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I am not sure that's a polite, that's a good way to tell starters. But <laughs> even to add on top of that, we as traders feed into volatility. And therefore, if a currency pair has a higher volatility than other currency pairs, more opportunities, we, 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 we most probably going to come across more opportunities, trading opportunities on that pair. And therefore, a monster is known to move, uh, to make humongous moves or just long strides. It's one of the pairs that you can identify and make a lot of money with. And at the same time, if you're not careful about your money management, and it can as well lead to your uh, dismay on your capital as a trader. So this is a risky business. You need uh, to understand how the market works, how the dynamics of the market set up, how, how do the forces of supply and demand affect the forex markets, how do you shield yourself against a lot of risk exposure to just make sure that you safeguard or you guard your capital in order to catch the next trade. Anyway, so we're going to help you. Uh, we're going together to draw this wedge that we um, spotted on the pair of the Great Britain pound again is the Japanese yen and just drawing simple lines uh, adjoining the swing highs of this pair. This is on a weekly time frame. As I mentioned, you rarely find us analyzing markets on lower time frames of let's say 30 minutes. I guess the lowest and at which I barely or we barely at first analyze the markets is one hour. We prefer higher time frames of the four hour 
to the daily to the weekly these are this is where the market a lot of market noise and spikes are eliminated when you analyze the markets approaching them from a higher time frame and this is something that most professional traders or traders who have been out there on the markets will agree with me and of course i remind you kindly keep sending your questions your sentiments is this webinar helpful are you learning is actually works a lot to keep us going and of course we keep on responding to your questions i'm going to take the last 10 minutes to take a few questions that you will have um, uh, forwarded to us so uh, i encourage you to just let's 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 keep on doing this i'm enjoying the webinar uh, i hope you are enjoying as well you need a glass of water you need some coffee just fill up the cup let's let's learn the markets let's learn how to professionally trade the forex markets and make a life, uh, make a living out of trading the forex markets. And therefore, um, I'm just going to further draw this wedge. And therefore, I'm going to simply just join the swing lows of this pair right there. Um, okay. That's it. This is how you simply draw, identify and draw a forex wedge. You see the upper boundary, the the resistant line up here, and the lower. You see the difference between. You remember in my definition, I was stating the difference between uh, how we draw, how we come about wedges, and the difference between how we come about uh, triangles. This is the difference between because you realize that the line of support, that is the line, the upper line, and the line of. Uh, I mean, sorry, the line of resistance, the upper line, and the line of support, which is below here both lines are facing uh to the same direction of the bull unlike lines of a, tri uh, of a triangle where uh, the support line is facing the opposite direction while the resistance line is facing the other direction for a wedge both lines mostly or should face the same direction as we can see on this example that we have let me just uh zoom in a bit for you so this is where again our breakout happened on this pair I'm just going to insert a simple shape right here i'm using the tools that are available for us by the egm securities um uh, platform which i find quite ideal and adequate for uh professional traders out there uh, the navigation and the latency is quite okay i have used their platform and I'm comfortable using this platform. So this is where this is where the breakout happened. Let me just draw a line right here. Um, spot this bearish candlestick. So this is our point of breakout based on this wedge. Something I would like to note here, unlike all these other examples that I've been giving uh, before, you find that after the bearish candlestick formed based on this uh, uh, wedge breakout, we actually had a series. This is why you always insist on always waiting for a confirmation candlestick before you can open a position. Patience, patience, patience. See what happened. They happened, um, a bearish candlestick happened. Then as we were waiting for a second confirmation bearish, bearish candlestick, it formed a kind of a reversal pattern and the market kind uh, con I mean, consolidated a bit. There was indecision. And at this point, this is where you keep away from such a pattern. And until there's a proper breakout or the, the, book, the bears have actually taken over the market and pushed the price down as, as to what happened at this level, this is where now uh, gives us a go ahead to open positions based on this pair. And if this would be our entry price level, then of course it would be ideal to have this uh, level up here as our stop loss. Uh, good thing with this uh, um, example is that it's within the current market. As you can see, the market is active, um, it's, still, it's still trading, a trading activities are taking place, it's still active. And therefore, if I was to open a position on this, I would have targeted my TP or my take profit to be down here. This would have given me a very nice risk to reward ratio of one to two. And this is the essence of it. And my TP would have been hit by this uh, fakey candlestick that went below this line and just uh, went back up. So this is this is this is another example of a breakout based on um, 
on a wedge. I think I'm just going to cover another one example very fast on the wedge, uh, another example based on trading wages. Then from there, I'll cover one more uh, subtopic about trading breakouts and uh, how to identify fake breakouts and to stay away from such. Then from there, I'll open up and take a few questions from our audience, then um, we'll take it up. So I'm just going to give another example from the pair, going back to the charts. Um, uh, this, this is an opportunity or a trading pattern that we located uh, on the uh, currency pair of the New Zealand dollar against the Canadian dollar based on the daily time frame. This is this was an opportunity that occurred back in 2017, and we had to flash back the market go backwards to identify these opportunities. And these opportunities that keep on repeating themselves. You know, as the, the old saying that history repeats itself, and this is the beauty of price action. Uh, whether you join up the forex industry tomorrow, or next week, as well, as long as you master these patterns, master how to trade them correctly, master how to wait for confirmations, master how to uh, plan your money management plan, have your psychology right about the markets, don't have high expectations, do not force your sentiments or your thought into the market, wait for the price to always guide you. As we always say, price is king in forex trading. And therefore, without wasting more time, I'm just going to draw together with you this wedge. This is an example of a descending wedge. The previous wedge we're covering was a rising, was a rising wedge. This is a falling wedge. And you just join the, um, the swing highs of this wedge right there. Then you join the swing lows right there. Um, move it lower a bit to make sure it doesn't cut out some candlesticks. And uh, there we go. And we have a proper wedge. Now, look, 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 look at how this breakout form. Look at how massive profit anyone would have taken this opportunity would have made from the Forex markets. Even better, look at how significant, if you placed a stop loss on this pair based on the opportunity that the prices show us, and you see how far the market headed up in the days that followed up, because uh, this is our, let me just showcase using um, an horizontal line. Uh, okay, so this is our breakout bullish candlestick from this uh, descending wedge. But then, as I said, we always wait for confirmation. It's very easy, as we're going to be covering the next last topic, it's very easy to uh, open a position and then the markets just fake out and get back into the uh, wedge. And therefore, this is why it's quite paramount to always wait for confirmation. And uh, what would have acted as our confirmation candle would be the next bullish candlestick that happened after the breakout bullish candlestick. And uh, the line, the horizontal line at the price of 89.21 would have been, of course, my entry trigger. This would be my entry level once this trading day closes because this is a daily time frame then this would have acted as my point of entry into this pair where would i have placed my stop loss of course uh, i would have placed my stop loss right about the open of uh, the breakout candlestick right there that would be a safe place uh, for me to accept, you know, what barely what stop losses mean is that at this level, if the market turns against me, then I agree that I was wrong. And therefore, this is a very important element to any professional trader to always uh, swallow your pride. And when the market goes against you, you can't be right, you know, all the time. There are losses in Forex market, and this is just like any other business, just like any other business. Patience is key. Patience is key, not just in Forex. Patience in spirituality, patience in um, relationships, patience in business. In life, it's an attribute in life, and it's not different in Forex. Actually, in Forex is where patience is required most. And therefore, the patience to actually be patient to wait for a confirmation candlestick to happen will differentiate you from 
the 80% of traders that lose money into the 20% that make money. It, you can differentiate yourself from the losing traders and be among the profitable traders. Therefore, this would be my stop loss at the price of 87.71. Then, of course, this would be my entry price level. And of course, I would target a nice risk to a ratio of around 1 to 2 or 1 to 1.5. Right there, you see uh, the level or the distance of my stop loss is quite small as compared to my target take profit. And this is, of course, professional forex trading and having a proper risk to reward ratio to just make sure you're always ahead of markets. And this is the fact if you instill a discipline of always being patient to wait for trades that offer you a nice risk to reward ratio, this is why even if you had a spread of 10 trades and you lost six out of the 10 trades and actually had four trades right, based on the mere fact that your risk to reward ratio was well spaced and this is something that most traders have an issue accepting and actually growing the discipline to trade along and it costs a lot of traders because you can't be actually the professional quote is that if you write five times out of ten then you actually a very good trader that is in the long term but if you write four times out of ten times and you're wrong six times with a proper risk to reward ratio you're still above threshold all these disciplines are covered in our comprehensive forex course that is actually online you just access it from our website and you can always learn from the course from wherever you are you visit our website that is fourthstreet.co.ke and you can always sign up we have our contacts in case you need to inquire anything we offer consultation to our students both on phone or they can always visit our offices which are based at Karen to get mentorship and consultation and therefore we're very passionate about mentoring traders and not just selling out a course out there and this is what we have the course is under forex course once you sign up you pay up you get your logins it's a lifetime access to a comprehensive course and the price that you pay for the course comes with six months free consultation as i said either on phone or you can visit our offices just call book a consultation session and you can have a one-on-one -on -one consultation and therefore this would be my ideal position to place our take profit and of course as we see look at what happened the market moved further to push up and this is uh how strong or how reliable trading and mastering breakouts is at this point i just i'll ask george to uh point in one or two points how he feels generally about the topic or pointers that i would have probably missed out before i head out to the last subtopic we are running out of time i'll just request george to take a minute or less to just throw out his comments and his feelings about the whole topic so uh, i would like to add on uh, why why breakouts Breakouts, yeah? One, not to get caught in ranging markets. You don't you don't want to to hold a trade for so long and the market is not moving. As you can see, once we have a breakout, a clear trend is established, and that is good for us. It, I'm sure you would like to have your profits taken as soon as possible. The other thing is you catch trends early you get the right timing in the market which is very hard to to accomplish getting the right timing uh is 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 actually an art it is it is one of the things that people struggle with even experienced traders having um the right entry into the market and and the other thing is the final, the final part, why breakout? You get low risk trades. As you can see, all the trades we have, we have demonstrated, they actually had more than one to two risk to reward ratio. There was a lot of opportunity, a lot of room for more profits. And that's why trading breakouts is, is, is one of the best price action trading strategies ever invented. And one thing uh, J Josh might have not pointed out is that always when we break a level, not always, but most of the time, we have a pullback. 
and this now gives you if you are late on the breakout you can rejoin and you, as you can see the the demonstration on the uh, on the nzdd card we had a breakout and a, and a pullback in form of, of a series of pin bars and dodges and these candlestick formations are covered extensively in our course and that gave us a re-entry so that you could you could go along thank you george that's definitely a killer point as we uh, head forward to conclude on our today's webinar that's thank you george actually for pointing that out i, I think i would have i wouldn't have forgiven myself if we ended the webinar without having put that across taking advantage of um, retracement on a price action pattern well I will agree that this, this is definitely a whole subtopic in itself but it's definitely a very strong point worth to note because let's say you weren't at the market when this confirmation happened and you know you come back at the markets you've already lost the opportunity and instead of regretting you just be patient for a retracement to happen not all the time that retracements happen but often than not, they happen. And if you happen to miss on to miss out on an opportunity, break. I mean, um, retracements are a nice way to catch up. Just enter, re-enter into the trade. Because what George was meant is that there was this retracement of this horizontal line that I've drawn in the markets. Uh, the bulls uh, took off the market, and the bears tried to fight the market, pushing uh, the pair, the prices of the pair down. And then this strong bullish candlestick that I'm pointing the calcer at, this would be my trigger if in case I missed on the earlier entry, then this would be my confirmation candlestick to, you know, open a long a position, a long position to make money uh, on this pair. And therefore, this is a very important point that George has noted, is a whole point, but there is just a lot. There's just a lot to learn in Forex, but with the right mentorship, with the right guidance, you can uh, grow this experience and learn to be a professional and uh, profitable trader. Therefore, I see we running quite out of time. I'm going to cover one final subtopic, and this is um, on uh, fake breakouts. Now, I think I think we've actually covered this this subtopic in my discussion where I I have been insisting all along that. One of the most surest ways to do, I mean, to open positions is wait for confirmations. And waiting for confirmations before you, you know, you trigger your trade or open your position uh, helps you to, um, you know, not fall prey to fake breakouts. Because what fake breakouts means is that, um, well, I'll just read through it. These are market scenarios where price breaks past the support or resistance level. Be it in a price channel, be it in a triangle, be it on a wedge, but only to move back or to retrace back into the trading range. Therefore, ending up to be a fake breakout, which sucks out people who, you know, enter the trade prematurely, therefore signing off their capital. And this can be caused mainly by two things. One of the most common aspects that causes this to happen is news releases. You know, we all know about the markets or pushes market. But what happens with in market spikes is that they don't last for long. So, and often than not, most market spikes uh, are followed up by a retracement back into the uh, uh, predominant trend of the market. The other thing is that, of course, at the end of the day, and I think this point two encompasses point one as well, is the imbalance in forces of supply and demand. And therefore, these are the two things that cause uh, market spike, spikes to happen and the only way to be sure and to approach trading breakouts and to make money from trading breakouts is to always wait for confirmation signals to happen. I'll just repeat this, wait for confirmation signals to happen before you can trigger your entry. If you haven't learned anything today, let this be your takeaway. Always wait for confirmation signals. This is actually not just in trading breakouts actually in our course and in all the topics and strategies we cover this being part of it there is no point where we guide our students to open trades without having confirmed that the sentiment has actually changed and they are 
odds of making money are more on their side than against them. Therefore, let this be one of the biggest takeaways. The only way to be sure to approach trading breakouts is to always wait for confirmation signals. And um, I think that almost puts us to the close of our webinar for the day. It's been um, uh, an exciting, I actually enjoyed it. I didn't realize how much time has, 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 gone, has gone past. But let me just uh, finish up by uh, showing you an example, a small example of a fake breakout that happened on the pair of the Euro Audi that you already analyzed and identified to explain to you based on the um, uh, Forex markets. Now, right here, let me just zoom in a bit. Well, the problem of zooming in, you lose the higher, you lose the bigger picture that I wanted to show you. So I'll just zoom out once again. And what we see on this pair of the pair of the Euro against the Australian dollar is that this candlestick right here, uh, the long tail that happened actually a few days ago, I think not a few days, a few weeks ago, I think three weeks, around three weeks ago, I think, yeah, if I'm not wrong. So this is um, an example of a fake breakout. And therefore, you could have actually been, uh, you know, been caught up in thinking that this spikes, when you are, if you are at the market when it was forming, you'd actually easily been fooled that you know, bulls have a lot of buying power and they're pushing the prices up, but then see how wrong it could have been because within the same trading week before close of the week, this candlestick actually retraced, forming a long week, the tail of the candlestick, we call it the week, forming a long week and, you know, a bearish body back into the consolidation. And you see the pair is still bearish as the market is we on the current market price of 59.15. And this is an example, a classic example of a false breakout. Breakout, why? Because this level, if you zoom out further, you find that this is a long-term level that uh, the market has been unable to break, um, to break, to break past past it. Uh, in as far as 2015, this is a very strong resistant level. Since 20 September 2015, up to date buyers have not been able to break this level. And this is why we experience a very strong fake out of a breakout that we, anybody could have thought, you know, before it happened that it was going to be a breakout to the upper side. But then you see how much the virtue of waiting for confirmation candlesticks would have saved you because of course you wouldn't have opened a position when this week wasn't going. You would have waited for the next week to confirm your sentiment. And this is how significant, just how significant waiting for confirmation candlestick is of essence to trading the Forex markets. And therefore, um, I'm just going to request George to read me one, two, one or two or three questions that we probably have gotten from our audience. Then I'll respond to one or two or three questions. Then I'll give George the opportunity to respond to probably uh, one or two other questions that are quite different from what I cover. Then uh, actually, let's make it two-two. Then from there, we can just wind up on a webinar. And uh, George, kindly. Yeah, thank you, Josh, for such a lovely webinar. It was quite helpful. I enjoyed a lot, too. Um, we have a question from Eric. He said, I find that if I use my daily charts, I risk a huge percentage of my account size. Does it mean I should add more funds to risk recommended about of 2% or what is the recommended account start? Wow, that's, that's, that's quite a wide up question because what I got from his question is Eric, right? It's Eric, yeah. What I got from Eric's question is that is trading based on a daily time frame, which is a very nice time frame to trade. But my challenge or my question to him would be, what kind of a trade are you? What strategies are you opening your positions based on? Is there a clear price signal that informs you to enter the position in the first place? Because trading based on the daily time frame is not enough. Trading based on the weekly time frame is not enough. 
you need to develop the skill of identifying an opportunity, a clear price action opportunity. Then the other point is, I don't know what kind of a trader are you. Are you a price action trader? Are you a fundamental trader? But the bottom line is daily time frame, weekly time frame, four hour is classic time frames. I think what you need to do more because the question of how much you risk into the market has nothing to do with the amount of capital you have. Because Definitely. what happens is you have a specified money management plan, whatever capital you have, whether you have $1,000, whether you have $10,000, if your risk exposure is, let's say, 3 or 4%, regardless of the size of your account, that doesn't change. The bottom line is look for quality trades. Make sure you have um, signals that actually inform you to take a position. How do you take your position? Then you can, of course, work on how to set your levels of stop loss. Make sure that the trade actually offers you a nice risk to reward ratio. Then I think your trading results will change tremendously. Another question, George. Yes, um, we have a question from Desmond Dagunda. Uh, suppose you do catch a trend. Is there any way of measuring how much of your account you should risk? Any way to indicate the strength of a trend? Since some are stronger than others, and you obviously want to risk more on a stronger trend and less on a weaker trend. Wow, Desmond. Um, you know, when it comes to trade, when it comes to forex trading, at Fourth Street Consultants, we're passionate about trading. I won't tell you what makes you happy. I'll tell you what works, what doesn't work, how you're supposed to approach the forex markets. And uh, there's a point I heard Desmond state about um, which, how much of your trading capital should you risk based on how strong a signal is? Or um, the other question was, how do you tell between a strong trend and a weak trend? Unfortunately, that's a whole, that's a whole topic on itself. But definitely, we tell how, um, we tell the strength of a trend based on the inclination or the angle in which the trend appears. For instance, let's just use the pair that is open on our charts. Let me try to see whether we can spot. Now, um, follow with me uh, from the price of uh, 39.28, where I have placed my horizontal line. See what happened after this level was uh, the bias took over this market. This is an example of a strong trend. You tell, you see the inclination, the angle of inclination of from where the trend started and going up. This is how you tell how strong are these bullish candlesticks that are forming one after the other. If it's weak, if it's a bit sluggish, for example, actually this is a good example. Look at, look at, um, let me do something real quick. An um, eclipse. Look at this, this trend. This, this is an example of a nice, uh, this um, bearish trend. It's a tradable trend, but then this is not as strong as the other trend that is quite very almost vertical and strong with bullish candlesticks. This is much of a weak trend. And therefore, when you're making a decision on which trend you want to ride on, then these are some of the things you look. What's the level of inclination? How strong is this trend? It's something you can actually tell from just looking at the charts. And therefore, as to the question of capital, then that is a question of money management. Before you even open a position, um, you should always, um, uh, of course, have a predetermined risk exposure that regardless of how many trades you open at any one point, you're not going to be risking a certain percentage of your risk capital. You need to learn how to develop a money management plan so that whenever you're on the trade, no matter how good a strategy looks, you preserve your capital. Remember when I said the first rule is to preserve your capital, second rule is preserve your capital, third rule is preserve your capital. And therefore, uh, this is a very important element. And um, this is, um, uh, uh, of course, I think for me, what you need is more mentorship on this. And of course, you can, you can always call us up even probably before even having to take a course and we can offer you guidance on more of these. You can reach us on our social media pages. We have a Facebook page. Uh, we have an Instagram page. This is our Facebook page. Uh, of course, we have contact details on our website. You can always feel free to call us. 
you can come over, visit us, let's have a chat. Even if you're not taking the course, we just take you through, you can ask you questions, and you can decide later whether you really need the course to polish your skills. So feel free to contact us using our social media pages as long as uh, the contact details on our website. And therefore, I'll give this uh, this opportunity to George. Please address one or, more two, uh, one or two questions, then we can wrap up the webinar as we're quite running out of time. Okay, thank yeah. you so much, Josh. Uh, there's a question, but the user went offline. Can you draw lines, uh, can you draw channels, wedges, triangles using line chart? And um, you can do that, but you do not recommend you do that because you'll, you'll be just solving one piece of the puzzle. Price patterns shows how the, the general behavior of, of, the, of the big money or the investors but to get the precise information, candlesticks, that's where they excel. We, we, we make trading decisions based on the candlestick formations. So uh, when you use line chart, you lose a huge part of price action. And, and, and I think uh, some people may, may be tempted to use bar charts or line charts, but to recommend using candlestick charts. Yes. Um, that's it? Yeah, um, there was another question, mm -hmm. um, but this was, uh, how often will you have these webinars? How often will you have these webinars? Now, that's a good question. I was going to mention it as we wind up on today's webinar. And so I'm just going to get right onto it. We've scheduled a total of three webinars in partnership with EGM Securities, uh, the only a non-dealing forest brokerage firm registered in Kenya. Today is our first webinar. We're going to have another webinar um, exactly a week from now on Tuesday next week, same time. Uh, follow our social media pages, that is our Facebook. Follow EGM pages, Facebook and their Instagram, and you'll find links on how you can register and join up on our upcoming webinar. And then the other Tuesday, I think, is on the 5th. We love our yeah. third webinar. So follow up on our social media. You get to see the topics. And um, we will, of course, be covering different topics every webinar session. The next one is going to be on Tuesday next week, same time at 3 p.m. And uh, we look forward to you joining us. We really hope you had uh, a fantastic learning session. And I think at this point, I'll just wind it up at that point. Thank you for everyone who has facilitated this webinar to uh you know to 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 come into completion and to be fruitful um uh, thank george for being part of this thank um, the egm uh our, our broker partners then um and just wish you well wish you all the best of course this has been recorded we're going to post it on our youtube channel and i think on our facebook as well social media so follow our YouTube channel, Fourth Street Consultants. We have a couple of more videos there, very educative. And this video will be available in a day or so. So in case you joined up late or you you know you want to refer a friend or something, it's going to be available on our database. It's going to be available on our social media pages and on our YouTube channel. And at this point, I say um, thank you for your time. Thank you for being a great audience. Thank you for being active. Thank you for your questions. I enjoyed the session. I can keep on doing this. And I hope to see you uh, next week. George, come on. Come on over. Just say bye yes. to these guys. Show up your face here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, well, from me and George, it's a wrap. All the best. And... Uh,